My name is Rosie Piller. I'm a curriculum developer in the Server Technologies Curriculum Development Department at Oracle, and I'd like to welcome you to this overview of upgrading Oracle Business Process Management Suite to 12C, specifically 12.1.3. This is the first in a series of eight videos describing the upgrade process. In this introductory video, we'll give you a high-level overview of the upgrade process. We've broken the upgrade tasks into three general groups, those that you perform before the upgrade, the upgrade tasks themselves, and the tasks you perform after the upgrade. We'll take a look at each of these in turn. Before we begin, a few words about this video series. First, it is targeted to experienced 11G users and is part of a larger offering of user assistance, which includes these videos, Oracle documentation, including online help, and the Oracle forums. If you have previously upgraded one 11G version to another, be aware that the upgrade process has changed significantly for 12C. Our goal in these introductory videos is to show you a typical upgrade from start to finish using a particular topology so that you get an impression of the overall process. We'll show you the tools to use and point out some important things along the way. But in these short videos, we cannot cover everything, so we also want to impress upon you the importance of reading the documentation thoroughly before proceeding with the upgrade. If you run into any problems, you can turn to the forums as well. It is essential to read the documentation, starting with the Upgrade Planning Guide and the Interoperability and Compatibility Guide. Not every installation can be directly upgraded to 12C. There may be additional steps you need to take to bring your installation to a state where it is ready to be upgraded. These guides describe which BPM versions can be upgraded, which database versions are supported, what operating systems, what topologies, and much more. The guides also describe the additional steps that may be necessary if you're using an earlier version of BPM or are running 11G components that cannot be upgraded to 12.1.3. It's important to understand and complete these steps first, so you don't try to upgrade an environment that is not upgradable. After reading the documentation and performing any necessary tasks, you'll need to back up your existing environment. After your backup is complete, there are a number of other tasks to perform at this stage. For example, you should create a test copy of your production environment, a clone of your environment, and upgrade that first to identify and resolve potential upgrade issues. You should purge unused instance data to save time during the upgrade, and much more. If you're using a file-based policy store, you'll need to take steps to create a database-based repository because BPM 12C does not allow file-based policy stores. Next, you'll need to install the 12C software in a folder that is different from the folder in which the 11G software is installed. If you're using SOA integrated product distributions such as Oracle HTTP Server or Oracle Service Bus, you'll need to install those as well. So that's a quick overview of the tasks to perform prior to the upgrade. Preparing for the upgrade is perhaps the most time-consuming phase of the upgrade process, but good preparation is going to be critical for your success. We'll talk more about the pre-upgrade tasks in the video titles you see on screen, Performing Pre-Upgrade Tasks and Installing 12C Software. The upgrade process itself can be broken down into four main subtasks, creating database schemas for 12C, upgrading schemas and instance data, reconfiguring the 11G domain, and upgrading the domain configurations. Let's go into each of these in a little more detail. The first step in the upgrade process is to use the Repository Creation Utility, or RCU, to create new schemas that are needed for 12C. Next, you use the Upgrade Assistant, or UA, 
to upgrade your existing 11G schemas to 12C and to migrate the instances that were in flight when you shut down your 11G environment. After active data migration is complete, the upgrade software automatically starts migrating closed instances in the background. If you have a lot of closed instance data, this could take a while, and there are tools you can use to schedule, manage, and monitor this migration. We'll talk more about this in the post-upgrade video. Next, you run the Reconfiguration Wizard to reconfigure the 11G domain, which accomplishes the tasks you see listed on the screen. Note that if you are upgrading a BPM domain with BAM, there is a special set of tasks you need to perform because BAM has been completely redesigned for 12C. These tasks are documented in detail in the Upgrading SOA with Oracle Business Activity Monitoring section of the Upgrading SOA Suite and Business Process Management Guide. Finally, you run the Upgrade Assistant again to complete the upgrade of the 11G domain to 12C by upgrading several components, including the ones you see listed here. Note that the 11G domain upgrade is done in place. The domain remains in the original folder structure but points to the 12C home directory. So that's a brief description of the upgrade process itself. You'll learn more about the upgrade tasks in each of the four videos listed here. After you complete the upgrade tasks, you're not quite done. There are still a number of post-upgrade tasks to perform, and then the all-important task of restarting everything and verifying that the upgrade was successful. Let's take a quick look at some of those tasks. For example, if you have any customized startup scripts or configuration files, you'll need to reapply those customizations because the upgrade process will have overwritten them. Similarly, the upgrade process doesn't preserve file ownership and permissions, so you'll want to make sure they're as you want them to be. Recall that when you upgrade the 11G database schemas and active instances, the Upgrade Assistant starts up a process to migrate closed instances. You can determine if the migration process is complete, and if it's not, you can schedule the migration process to run during off-peak times. You can start 12C and run your applications without waiting for this process to complete, but you'll want to understand the pros and cons of doing so. We'll talk more about that in the video covering post-upgrade tasks. At this point, you can start up the admin server, node managers, and managed servers, along with any other components in your environment. When your servers have been restarted, you can access your applications and verify that they work as they should. In-flight instances should be visible and actionable, closed instances should be visible, and you should be able to handle recoverable faulted instances. So that's a sampling of post-upgrade tasks. As we'll see in the last video in the series, the exact tasks that you perform will depend on your environment and the components that you have installed. So that concludes our survey of the steps in the upgrade process. Just one more thing before we go. In the upcoming videos, we'll be demonstrating the upgrade on an example topology. Let's take a moment to get acquainted with that topology. First, we have two hosts. Each is running a version of Linux certified to work with 12C. Each has a JDK certified to work with 12C. Each has a WebLogic server, SOA Suite and BPM Suite 11G, WebLogic server node managers, and a domain named BPM Domain. One host has an Oracle database whose version is certified to work with 12C. The other host has the admin server running in its domain. Both have managed servers, and those managed servers are clustered. Finally, each has a standalone instance of Oracle HTTP server as a load balancer.
We chose this topology because it is simple but allows us to address many of the tasks you'll need to complete in your single or multi-host environment. That concludes this overview of upgrading to 12C. You are now ready to proceed to the next video in the series where you'll learn about pre-upgrade tasks. I'm Rosie Piller. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.